duplicate set of these and we're just going to peel the paper off of it and uh, start assembling this coil. Now the control board you can do afterwards because the important part is to get the core assembled with uh, so you can wind the wire on it and the, and the control board is this after piece that's after the core has been wound and the coil is basically assembled then we solder on the back control board so I'm going to go ahead and put a I cut a couple of these already so sorry my hands are a little nicked up this stuff is not easy to work with it it'll cut you up from the plates and the transformer plates to the winding jig and uh, everything in between it ended up with a little cuts all over you yeah. so, so. Alright, now we got a set of these, so we're going to take this, and I had these taped together, but actually I wanted to ensure that they were square and were set right, so I decided uh, to pull the tape off, I'll probably reuse it, but what I'm trying to do here is ensure that these plates are optimal for this thing. It looks like I'm short one. So as you can see there, it doesn't get any squarer than that. So that's what we need right there. So, so now these little pieces that you've seen us make early on um, will fit on this the ends like this. Now by putting this down in there first you know we're kind of doing this on the fly. This stuff is not made with a machine so you're going to run into issues with um, you know how, how the assembly goes so by doing it this way um, you're eliminating uh, the chance that you're going to mess it up. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start the wrap and we're going to use it as a jig to ensure that the plates are straight and sticking out of the, the face in the right way. So I want to make sure that's good and tight because this is the the structure that's holding this whole thing together. Now once it's wet around uh, wrap of wire and the plates are on both sides and the ends are on there, it's a, it's a pretty strong structure. But as we're doing this, it's not. So see as you can see some of these are cut long because these are not perfectly water jet uniformed. So I cut them with a Sawzall, so uh, they might be a sixteenth of an inch off, but they all fire. The nice thing about the design is they all fire, um, and they're all internally triggered, so it's not as critical uh, that they're identical. As close as possible, but. They don't have to be identical because they're all firing on their own timing. So they're not firing at the same millisecond another coil is firing. And if one had less resistance than the other, the path of least resistance means that a couple of your chips are going to get hot before the ones with the higher resistance. So, so okay. Now we got that on there, so now what we're going to do here is we're going to drill these. Now on the template there's holes where these could go and most of the time they would work but I, I've built a few of them now and I'm sure that I would rather just drill this because I can see it. I want to ensure that I get a nice seat in it so I'm going to just drill 
the front face afterward. The back face is fine, but the front face, I want to ensure that it's it's nice and squared up. Now, I'd like to say this uh, just for your own benefit. This right here, polycarbonate, has different temperatures and some of this material can handle high temperatures some of it can't and if you have some like this material here even though this is polycarbonate it has a lower melting point than this industrial grade polycarbonate so what happens when I'm drilling this is it'll heat up the drill bit get the drill bit hot and it could actually stick in the material and if that happens you're you might lose your drill bit not to mention the piece and have to rewrap the whole thing so you don't want to make sure you want to make sure this is not hot so I was also using a number four screw for these um, that I was getting at the hardware store <clears throat> but I was having a problem with them snapping the heads off so what I decided to do is is find a, a nice hardened self tapping screw now they're not countersunk and they're nut driven so they're they're a little harder in material and that's part of the structure so it's probably a good thing that they're like that <coughs> now your magnets are have to lie within here within this part so the core the magnet should lie within this part so it should be tapered and you shouldn't have it hit those screws now if you are worried about it what you can do here is use one of these flat drills and I can pop this off now it's set and just uh, recess it a little bit like this And that should alleviate any worry about it hitting. So we got this all straightened out here. Square it up real good in here. So there we go. Now we're ready to put these screws in and you know what you want to have is a, a drill that's got a low speed on it and you got adjusted so you don't want to strip that head off so and then we're, we're right down in there like that and there we go a couple of those popped up I'm going to grind this back section off before, before I put the plate on like this. You see the alignment there is, uh, the holes still are going to align perfectly and that's where the wire comes out for the wrap and where it ends. Control board mounts and then the top and bottom mounts. So we're going to grind this off flush and if if I would have taken into account the part that was sunk, sunk down inside of there that would have been the right size so that's why I'm doing this stuff for you guys so uh, the, the measurements on the templates will be accurate so by the time I'm done building about 15 of these uh, you shouldn't have a problem with yours so Okay, we're going to attach the back to the front half. And what you want to do here when you're mounting this, you can see the holes are lining up, can cut into that material without a problem. And when we drill this, you want to ensure that this hole 
is to your right as you're looking at it because that's the way it's getting wound and it has to be there or it's going to mess you up. So you could actually put this on backwards and then um, it would still work but it could confuse you. So just make sure that hole's facing the right direction and then we're ready to square it up. And this is why I decided to let you pre free drill the holes for the mounts because you don't have to try to center this up and make it perfect. You just line it up where it looks good on there. Drill that. Pull this off. And now with that hole facing on that side, we're going to recess that slightly. So by recessing that, it lets it fit in the jig better. I was using countersink screws, so uh, at one time it was uh, a necessity. But now with these screws I'm using here, they're a little harder and they're, they're actually making this whole process work a little better.